My, my name is Carl Ardo, and this is my uh, 62 drag bike that I built for the street. This is my 10th Triumph build. Uh, every bike that I build kind of starts from a single inspiration point. So I didn't want to build a bobber. I wanted to set out to build what I believe to be a bike that would represent and also perform kind of something that could either be a drag bike of an era and also something you could take to the salt flats. I realized that I wanted to build a duplex frame, which is a double tubed front end, and that was made in 61 and 62, so that kind of dictated the look because I wanted that light look in the front. And then I wanted to use a 30 millimeter Siriani front end because that's the front end to use in that era. And that began to allow the bike to show itself to me. So to use the Siriani front end, I had to extend the stem 5 eighths of an inch to get it to fit this Triumph. And then the difficulty was, was finding a rim front hub that had a break that would fit between four and a quarter inches because that's how narrow the legs were. So uh, in my process, after three months of focus looking, I could not come up with anything but a Honda C90 front end, which looked ugly. I was really ready to set the front end free and go down another avenue. And uh, I'm on eBay, and there's this little ticker tape that goes underneath things you might be interested in. And there's a, this front shot of this Montessa Impala double levered vented hub. I've never seen one before, and it was cool. And there were seven photos. And the last photo had an upwards angle down so you could see the width of the hub, and it was extremely narrow. So I contacted the guy, asked him how wide it was. He said it was four and a half inches from one side to the other. I needed four and a quarter. So I went and got closed bearings, eliminated the grease felt, shaved off an eighth inch on either side, and now I've got a, this really slick little hub that works as well as looks cool. So I had a hardtail built through Factory Metal Works. It's a two inch stretch, inch and a half drop, you know, to give me a little longer length. Uh, the wheels are XL wheels. Uh, they're aluminum high shouldered with stainless steel spokes. I'm running a complete aluminum rear hub, which uh, as well as looks really slick, it takes weight off the rear so it spins up quicker. So I designed the oil tank and gas tank, and uh, my friends at Orange OC Cars in Lake Forest, uh, very talented people, this fellow Bill, took my cardboard creation and turned it into what you see, which is just, it's a whole lot further than I could have possibly ever conceived it would have gone. The attention to detail is incredible, and it makes the bike. It makes it look like it's going 100 miles an hour sitting still. And, uh, each time I kind of move towards another level of both expense and commitment, I began to really show itself to me that, you know, it was really worth doing. I used the 62, the frames are 62, the engine cases are a 62, but it's not a matching numbers bike. So I found a set of cases, I put a 64 crank, 650, I lightened it so it's only 17 pounds instead of the 20 pounds it should be, and then had it balanced to 68% uh, if I recall. I'm old, so sometimes I make mistakes. <laughs> and then what I did was I used 1970 cylinder heads, Bonneville head. So as far as this bike, the goal was, was to make it light. So I have aluminum handlebars, it's got the aluminum tank, and I didn't even want to paint the tank or put a clear coat because Everything else you introduce is it, it has a weight factor. So I just wanted to kind of keep that in the forefront of my theme. So uh, it's been sanded with 380 paper, the aluminum tank, the oil tank, I'm gonna get up, is vented with holes. So it, it, it basically has the air-cooled feature that cooling the oil, because the oil is the thing that cools the bike, but it also is the whole theme. So I've got holes in the seat, holes in the oil tank, holes in my primary case. I have a Bob Newby belt drive, which is a lightened belt drive for racing. I've got these great megaphone exhaust pipes, and then I put baffles in them. The exhaust pipes coming off the header is an inch and three quarter. The, the baffles in the megaphones are two inches, so I have less restriction, they're 12 inches long. And they sound really deep, they have a very, respectable sound as a bike if you drive through a neighborhood, but when you open up the throttle, it, 
it just changes everything. <laughs> so this bike is like a racehorse. Uh, and I've not had a bike like this. This is the first time that I've had a bike that when you get the 4,000 RPMs, usually that's kind of their sweet spot. This wants to go faster. This is not happy going for grand. I mean, each time you kind of move into that doorway, it just continues to want more. So I've got about 250 miles on the engine. So it's kind of broken in, but not broken in enough that I'm going to go twist it and see really what's in there. But what it's revealed to myself is that, yeah, I've, I've built uh, something that I'm really happy, both in aesthetics as well as performance. My background, I have a fine arts degree. I started out in building hot rods, then went to school to be a sculptor, left that world to kind of get back into this, but using those, those that toolkit that I have of how to look at things, aesthetics, spacing, balance, all those yada, 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 instead of just putting stuff together. So I approach it more as a sculptor that happens to build bikes. So this is a culmination of, you know, each, each, each project along the way, and as a, when you build triumphs, you never can get to the place that you understand them, you know, because they always give you a left-hand turn. Uh, so thank you, Blacktop Magazine, for wanting to feature my bike in your publication. You know, it's really good to know you and your efforts and what you do, and uh, I'm flattered. I'm Christina Martini and you're watching Blacktop TV.